Now, machine learning isn't applied to just solving one kind of problem. And even for a given type of problem, we have many different machine learning methods that we can uh, make use of. And, and so this section is, is about trying to lay out what the key dimensions are of this machine learning space. So one of the, the first key dimensions is what kinds of outputs do our models uh, generate? And the, and the two broad subcategories there are continuous output versus categorical output. So continuous outputs, we generally think of in terms of uh, regression uh, kinds of problems. Uh, for categorical outputs, these are classifier uh, types of models that, that uh, are used. So here are a couple of specific examples. For the brain machine interface problem that we've already talked about, here we are predicting, for example, the velocity of the elbow and the shoulder as a function of the recent history of neural activity. The, this velocity, these velocity variables are continuous outputs, and, and so applying regression types of techniques are, are most appropriate in this situation. For classification problems, we have some sort of an input uh, that is presented to the, the model, and its job is to to label the, the input as being a member of one of several discrete classes. So the, this left-hand image here is an example of that uh, in, in which we present an input, uh, which is a picture of a cat, and the, the model produces the, the label cat. Now, now the output can either be crisp, it is a cat, or it can be probabilistic, a cat with probability 0.95. Maybe it's a squid with probability 0.01. These other images here, these other examples, uh, really constitute something more involved than just classification. They're really a mixture of classification and regression kinds of problems. Another broad uh, dimension that, uh, that is key is the type of information that is available at the time that we're actually training our models. One end of the spectrum is something called supervised learning. Uh, this is where our training set contains input and output pairs. So, so what we're saying is given some particular input, this is the output that we should be uh, producing. The, these outputs, of course, can, can be either continuous or categorical or, or probabilistic. That does not matter. That's an independent uh, choice that can be made. On the far end of the, the same spectrum is a uh, problem type, which is called unsupervised learning. Here, the training set contains only uh, a set of inputs. There is no desired output that corresponds to each one of these inputs. And, and really with unsupervised learning methods, we're trying to understand what the structure of the inputs is. So, so you will actually look at two subcategories here. One is uh, called clustering, where what the model will do is it'll take an input and provide a class label uh, for that input, but it's makes its own choice as to what the class labels are for, for the inputs, and it's not imposed by the training set. Uh, the, the other subcategory is, is really about trying to identify the, the shape of the, the distribution of the data, uh, the, the, the input data set. So we might have an input data set, uh, say that is two-dimensional. So we have uh, components x1 and x2, so a given input might be a single combination of a, a value for x1 and a, a value for x2. If we, if we uh, then look at not just a single point, but an entire set of points, uh, a key question is whether or not these fill up the entire space. So we might have a, a scenario where our points fall all over uh, this x1, x2 space, or we can have a, a scenario where there might be some uh, amount of structure. So one that you, many of you might be familiar with might look something uh, along these lines where there's a very substantial linear relationship between x1 and x2. So there's high correlation in that case, in this case. And, and identifying that, the fact that there is correlation can be very helpful in us understanding the, the data and can also be very helpful in us processing the data well. Another type of relationship that we might see uh, might look something like this. Uh, so here's another uh, shape here. Uh, in this case, if we were to ask correlation, 
what it would say about the relationship between X1 and X2. It would say that there's no uh, correlation, but in fact, there's some substantial, uh, there's a substantial relationship between X1 and X2. And, and some of our unsupervised learning methods can actually identify these types of shapes as well and do things like com compress the data down to not this two-dimensional space, but a, but a single dimensional space. And we'll, we'll get into that as we get further into the semester. So supervised learning and semi-supervised learning represent really two ends of a, of a very long spectrum. And sitting in between is something called semi-supervised learning. In this scenario, our training set contains some samples of inputs and, out, and corresponding outputs. So like with supervised learning, an input and a desired output. Uh, but there are many uh, samples where we just have the input data and the training set does not say what the output should be. Uh, and we'll, we'll study some methods in, in this category, but it, but it turns out under certain uh, conditions, training a model using all of the available data, uh, we can end up with a model that is higher quality than if we just use the points for, for which we have the input output uh, pairs. Uh, and and this, is, this is actually a, a much more common type of a scenario out in the real world because providing labels, providing desired outputs uh, can actually be a pretty expensive process. Another class of machine learning problem is something called reinforcement learning. This is very different than the prediction or classification of some sort of an input. Reinforcement learning is really about uh, constructing models that are parts of agents that are taking actions in some environments. We might imagine a robot that is, that is trying to bake us a cake, uh, or we might imagine a player, uh, an agent that is playing uh, chess or Go or, uh, or an Atari game, uh, or more recently we've, see, we've seen some agents that, uh, that, that play StarCraft. Um, and, and here, uh, time, time matters. And at each point in time, uh, we have some sort of an input that describes the situation. So for StarCraft, we might have a, uh, the, the image that, that shows us all of the, the, uh, the, the players that are around us. Uh, and then the agent has to make a decision about uh, what action to take now. Do I attack? Do I run away? Do I start building something, uh, some other uh, component? And, and after that action is, is executed, that takes the game to a, a next state, a, a next image, and we potentially also get some evaluation information back. A common evaluation uh, you, you also see this term reward. Common evaluation types are things like how much time did an action take to execute or how much, how much energy or effort did I expend taking that action or, or even as simple as did the agent win the game. Uh, and, and then the learning problem becomes uh, one of for a, an input now at some time t, what action should I take now that's going to maximize not just the reward I'm going to get in the next step, but the, the sum of all rewards to the end of the game. So the, the, this is a, an area of machine learning that's more on the advanced side. We're not going to spend time in, in class on it, but you should need to be aware that this uh, type of thing exists. So that concludes our big picture of machine learning methods. And now we'll move on uh, to uh, some more, more of the practical kinds of issues that come up in machine learning.